Run in circles, brother. Ooh. I can shift towards you, too, if you need. Yeah, just come this way a little bit. Perfect. Alright. Yeah. So, once you have people, I'll get... I'm, I want dibs on sponsored cups. Okay. <laughs> that was my first... Th my first thing was like, Whoa, who's on here? Oh, no, this is from work. I just yeah. got this work. Urban Roots. Urban Roots. This is a uh, name of this one. It's kind for something. I don't know. Kind for not gonna read that. Yeah. Kind for not gonna read that. It's on tap there. You can go try it out. There you go. Sweet. Kind for nothing. Kind for nothing. There it is. Boom. Fence it right in. Yeah. You wanna put this somewhere? No, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, beer themes. Beer. All right, and test, test, test. Perfect. And it's gonna cool. And now we're going. Sweet. What's going on, dude? Living well, the dream. <laughs> welcome to the tap room, uh, the podcast where I drink beer with interesting people. I'm here today with Greg Sewers, paintball extraordinaire. This is like the third paintball player I've had on here in three weeks. So, well, uh, we're pretty cool people, man. Yeah, you are because you guys <laughs> live very interesting lives, and you—it's uh, a very uncommon sport. Sure. And you see a lot of cool things. Everyone I've talked to you has been everywhere. So, uh, <laughs> first question: um, Since this is, here, this is a beer podcast, what kind of beers do you normally like? All IPAs. All IPAs. Almost relentless, relentlessly IPAs. <laughs> Good, because we're drinking from Urban Roots. It's kind for nothing. It's a collab with another brewery. I forget the name of the other brewery, but... 7%? Had, yeah, it's 7%. Right. Yeah, 7 I had this can today, so it's pretty fresh. So. Salute. Mm, that's pretty that, good. that is bold. Not super skunky, but like it feels like it's gonna have that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like it's a unfiltered. It's a, it's a unfiltered IPA. It's a New England style. Right, right I'm from right, New England. Right up your alley. Yeah, <laughs> it's a uh, yeah. So New Englands are like more for like it's a late hopping, so you're gonna get more aroma and the floral notes yeah. from the hops instead of like the bitter dankness from it. You know, this is the first beer where someone said floral, and I'm like, yeah. You yeah. know, a lot of floral descriptions I never agree with. This is really yeah. Yeah, wow. that's just uh, it's one thing I really like about them because it's like I call them entry level IPAs because it's easier for <laughs> people who aren't into like the big bitter beers to sure. uh, kind of get into it. That's how I kind of uh, my wife likes these a little more. She doesn't like beer at all, like unless it's like super sour, you can't tell it's a beer or anything yeah. like that. But she's like, this is more tolerable. So. <laughs> tolerable. Yeah. So uh, let's get right into it, man. So um, first off, uh, who are you playing for now? Because it was Impact last year. Yeah. Now it's Infamous. Now it is LA Infamous. LA Infamous. Now for the second time. Yes. Because I played for them back in 2011 yeah. and 12. This is... I've lost count of the teams you've been on. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I keep telling everyone the same thing. Um, so I actually got cut from Impact. Yeah. A lot of people don't know this, how it went down. Mm -hmm. um, I've only been cut twice in my career. I've probably played for like 13 pro teams. Mm -hmm. I've always left for a good reason, but really I'm at the end of my career, you know, mm -hmm. the last handful of years. And... I want to be with a team through the end. So I'm hoping that's infamous. Mm -hmm. And right up until I hang up my cleats, I'll be infamous. Hmm. Okay. Um, so, so I'm trying to think here. Like you've been playing, how long have you been playing pro paintball since you're... I went pro at the end of 2006. Jesus. Yeah. It's I've been doing this a long time. Yeah. <laughs> it's 14 years, man. 14 years. That's, hey, that's my number. Yeah. yeah. There you go. It's, 14 uh, years pro. Wow. Yes. That, you know, that's because like the last... Pro player I had on here. I had Joe Beard on here mm. two episodes ago. Yeah, two episodes ago. So, but he because he just went pro like within the past like five years. Sure. So and so his experience is like kind of limited because you you were playing paintball back in like when it was fifteen balls a second. Yeah, and seven man. And seven man. And seven when seven man was thing was sip, was semi uncapped, and yep. then it was semi capped at fifteen balls a second. Yep. And it's just like so you've gone through. The two, the two biggest eras of tournament paintball. Sure. So what is, like, the biggest difference you can tell from 2006 to 2019? That was the last season. So paintball still, in general, a very young sport. So if you go back to 2006, mm -hmm. 
we had these big open lanes, these small funky shaped bunkers, mm -hmm. and we had full auto weapons. You know what yes. I mean? They were shooting so fast. Yeah, I started playing in 2005. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, so you know what it was like, yeah. right? If you gave us that same equipment and layout now, everybody would die off the break. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. the players have gotten so much smarter and better mm -hmm. at individual skills yeah. that. We just weren't as good as we thought we were. The game has just grown so much since then. Mm -hmm. But I like it more now because I feel like a lot of the skill set for the game, like the snap shooting, the break shooting, yeah. the the gun skills have all leveled out. So now it's about can you outsmart the other guy? Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah, that's pretty – it's become more of like uh, – because I remember back in, the, back in like 2005, 2006, like the guys who were the uh, – excuse me – the experienced players yeah. were huge. They yeah. Were, very, they stayed in one spot and just literally sat on a turret. <laughs> right. Right. And now everyone is like, is a, you're a pro athlete. Like, your body has to be in, like, tip-top shape because you are punishing. Punishing and, like, diving all over the place trying to get through a lane. Mm -hmm. And then you also have to be, like, like you said, you have to outsmart the other guys. So you have to, like, usually experience beats out, beats out the, uh, un, the unexperienced guys. So, like, you kind of, like, can outsmart them a little bit. 100%. Yeah. I mean, the, the way I, the way I try to describe us, I think the most comparative thing, although it's not a team sport, is MMA. Yeah. Because you're trying to outsmart the guy. You're trying to beat him into the ground and mm -hmm. and submit him. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, you can get in someone's head in paintball. Yeah. But Oh, I've been there. Yeah. 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 I actually, the because I haven't played a tournament in a... Did I? Oh, and I stopped recording. Okay. All right, anyway, back to what we were talking about. Anyway, uh, paintball's more like MMA. The... the Backtrack, because I'm pretty sure I messed up my computer. So, backtrack, paintball's more like MMA, you gotta outsmart the guy compared to back in about 14 years ago. Yeah. When guys, like, it's just literally just guys with the most expensive guns pretty much ran the sport. And now, uh, you gotta be tip top, and I lost a track of what I was saying. Well, the tip top shape thing, right? So, yeah. you were talking about going from a big, bulky back guy who could yeah. just hang out in one spot and yeah. be a communicator. There's no place for them anymore because no. the game is so fast. Yeah. You you have to be an athlete, but I love that. You know what yeah. I mean? If we're going to be, I mean, ideally Olympians or cool. extreme sport athletes and we're going to bring in these huge name companies, yeah. we have to reflect what pro sports reflect. Yes. And that is just beast. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this, uh, now I remember, because uh, I haven't been playing, uh, I haven't played tournament paintball in a while. Well, I haven't played a tournament in over a year. I played the draft day at the Capital Edge. Sure. And... We sucked. <laughs> we lost, I think we won maybe two points the entire day. Oh. Because it was just like, it, what would happen is, is like, um, I was the most experienced guy on the team, and like, I was like, all right, cool. I would take advantage of one side, and then the other side would completely die, and it yeah. just run and choose them back. Yeah. And so this happened to us all day, and like, by like the second to last game, I was like, oh my God, fuck this. Yeah. This is not, I don't, I don't care. I just, I just, I just did not. I, just, I had losses. Like I don't even care. I only paid fifty bucks to be here. Yeah, I just want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. Yeah, it was bad. And then, like, I remember one tournament in Vegas. We lost every point. Yeah, every point. It was the worst time I ever did. I was like, what am I? I just literally just paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to be here, and I just lost every point. And it's like the most def defeating feeling ever. Yeah, it was, it was awful. But that's where mental resilience comes in. And then you're like, well. Just gotta get back on the horse and keep going and keep trying. Yeah. And then I did one more year and I was done. But <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I keep telling myself I'm I'm just about done. Like like you were saying at the beginning, I have traveled the world. Yeah. And when all that stuff when paintball was at its top end, like height, mm -hmm. when, you know, like skateboarding was yeah. a good comparison back in the day. I think I traveled um and I played almost thirty tournaments in one year. Yeah. During college. So I went to Australia three times, Mexico three times, mm -hmm. five U.S. events for seven man, five yeah. U.S. events for NXL, three or four Canadian events, and five European events. Jesus, all in one year. I mean, I must have traveled. Did you have two hundred and fifty thousand sky miles? Maybe. Did you have an apartment, or was that just like a glorified storage unit? Dude, uh, I was actually still in the dorms. Oh. At this point <laughs> in my life, I was begging teachers to let me miss class. I was like, I promise, I'm a good student. Like, I'll get it all done, you know. Yeah. And I just, I would miss class after class after class. Yeah. And, I just, uh, I, I would bring letterheads in from the sponsors, like, hey, you know, yeah. actually, Travis Lemansky was the first one from Infamous oh, to wow. write me a letterhead. It mm -hmm. was from Empire, and it said, like, hey, you know, Greg's job requires that he be here, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, and they let me miss class. Oh, my God. Yeah. You know, it's funny, because, like, because, well, I was thinking about it, because I remember I was watching a documentary, 
uh, it was one of the Dirter videos, and it was talking about Vicious, when Vicious was a thing. Yeah. And uh, it, I think it was Maddie Marshall, of course, Maddie Marshall narrating the whole thing. And he was talking about how being a college student was like the perfect job for a pro paintball player with <laughs> such a flexible schedule. Sure. Flexible, depending on... <laughs> yeah, flexible. <laughs> flexible. Dude, when I, when I was in college... Oh, sorry, were you... No, you're good. Uh, when, when I was in college, I was in uh, for nutrition, right? Yeah. So, um, at the like the the junior year where I was playing thirty events, and yeah. I was just traveling all over. We had a lot of group projects, and yeah. I went to see my counselor, and I was like, "Hey, what's going to happen here? I need to graduate next year. Mm-hmm. Like, let's set this up." And she literally told me, "It's never going to happen. You should just change majors. You should stop. Uh, you either need to quit paper or quit school." And I literally was like. Thanks. And I walked out and then dominated. Uh, I graduated with honors oh, wow. all four years. Look at Dom, you. Yeah, dude. Never got even a B minus in college. Wow. Um, the overachiever you are. Dude, uh, you know what? She just, she lit my little fire. Okay. Like I was, I had to be a good student to play paintball when I was a kid. So yeah. I was always kind of a good student. Yeah. But man, she told me it, it's never going to happen. Though. I just gave watch. up sleep as like watch religiously. Yeah, watch me. Watch me. <laughs> So I'd love to remember her name and go back and be like, hey, remember when you told me it would never happen? Yeah. Yeah, I'm awesome now, yeah. so enjoy your desk. Like, you have, <laughs> multiple, you have multiple world tournaments, multiple championships, tournament wins. Like, you, you've done it, you have yeah. done it all when it comes to paintball. Yeah, I've seen more of the world than she's read about in a history book. You know what I mean? I would 100%. <laughs> yeah. Every now and then, you got you got to flex on them. Stupid little dude. Okay. But, uh, yeah, so... All right, so you so with paintball being more of an athletic sport now, and quote unquote, this is my trainer. So <laughs> uh, you have your own. You know, you got your. You've transitioned. Like you've turned nutrition into now your full blown uh, personal trainer. Yeah. And so now you have your own company. Uh, Mac train. Mac is what mixed athletic performance. Yep. <sighs> Nailed it. Nailed it. Look at that. Did my research. <laughs> uh, so what, like, what what kind of drew you into physical fitness? So it actually started with paintball. Okay. Um, when I first started playing tournament paintball as a little kid, I had two guys on my team mm-hmm. um, that were really into fitness, and they were older, you yeah. know. And um, I started realizing, like, man, they were in shape. Mm-hmm. They had great cardio. They were doing well. Yeah. And I played soccer at the time, so I was kind of into it. But yeah. I started learning from them, like learning about nutrition and learning about mm-hmm. lifting weights. Yeah. It was all downhill from there. I said, "That's that's going to give me an edge." Yeah. I'm doing it. Yeah. You know. So I started doing it. Um, and I think like most people in fitness can say, like, I kind of got addicted to it yeah. and I was like, well, I want to learn more. So I actually ended up going to college for business mm-hmm. my first semester or first year. And I was falling asleep in my coffee, dude. Like, yeah. like okay, economics, got it. Ah. Yeah. I'm in business right now. I know. Yeah. It's awful. So someone literally said to me, they're like, well, why don't you change to nutrition? Mm-hmm. I didn't even know that was an option. <laughs> so, you know, I was any college student. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't research. Yeah. So I, I found out about that. nutrition. Yeah. And I just doubled down. So I started loving it. Um, and actually, the personal training thing came from my uh, first boss at CalFit. Yeah. Manaz Maritash. I'll never forget this woman. She yes. was dope. She was yeah. so cool. Yeah. Uh, but I started working at a gym. I was a swim instructor. Nice. Then I, yep. Then I moved inside after summer to mm-hmm. childcare. Yeah, I was oh, childcare. Okay. Yeah. If you ever want to master childcare, learn how to juggle. Okay. All the kids get mesmerized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um... This at this point, I had just been picked up, I think, by, by Impact. Okay. For the first time, so 2013. Okay. And I was like, or somewhere in there, whatever it was. Mm. Um, I was in the back office and I was talking about how, hey, I'm gonna attack this paintball thing. I'm gonna go full time. I'm gonna quit my job. I'm yeah. gonna figure out how to make it work. Mm-hmm. Well, she overheard me and goes, "Well, what do you do?" I told her a little bit about paintball. And she goes, "Why don't you be a trainer?" I'm like, uh. That sounds cool, you know. <laughs> um, I love fitness, yeah. and I had my degree in nutrition at that point. She's mm-hmm. like, "Yeah, with the degree, you can be a trainer right now, and we'll get you certified as you go." Like, Sweet, <laughs> dude. I mean, maybe a month later, I was working sixty-hour weeks. I was full of. Cl- I, had, I had like fifty or sixty clients at the time. Wow, dude, just ripping. I fell in love with it, and I kept getting certifications. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I got a little sick of the corporate world. Yeah, went off and made map training. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, here I am. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, in the. Uh... And it's like all online based, right? Mm. So that's how it, it evolved. So when I left my first job, mm-hmm. I did mobile training. So I was filling up my car full of equipment and driving to fields and hosting <laughs> yeah. the clients that had, had followed me away. Mm-hmm. Um, from there, 
I went to online training because yeah. I was traveling for paintball so much. I was a full-time player. Yeah. Um, so at one point, I was away from home for 63 days. Wow. Yeah. 63 days and wow. three, three or four continents. It Jesus. was gnarly. That um, sounds legit. It was legit. It yeah. was awesome. I mean, I literally had four-hour turnarounds in Miami airport mm -hmm. when I'd fly in from Thailand, have four hours to make my South Africa flight. Like, it was insane. But with that, MAP had to be online. So yeah. I did the online training thing. And then in just in the last couple months, I actually joined a company that's down the street. Yeah. An old friend of mine from CalFit now owns a clothing company oh, wow. called Till You Collapse. Yeah. They have a gym, and mm -hmm. they've now given me the head trainer position mm -hmm. to come in and start hiring basically people like me, independent trainers that want to come in and grow their brand. And, yeah. Um, now I'm training in person again. Wow. Yeah. So so I so I've been I've been with MAP for about on and off for like two years. Yeah. Like yeah. On and off two years, and uh, so because I remember us doing workouts in your garage at first. Yep. And then we went to Tilly Collapse, which is a very nice facility. Yeah. And it's because literally you walked me through a warehouse of clothing to a very nice private gym. It's awesome. Yeah, that we got a seven note session by the way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, with it all being online based, because I did this also while I was, while I was overseas, I was able to keep up with like the entire program, and you do regular check ins and everything that I didn't always fill out. <laughs> uh, and like, so how how do you um, for online for the online product like for the online product how do you base the workouts for different clients? Oh, that's huge. Yeah. Um, it's it's so big. So for clients who are just getting in, I actually have created a pretty a pretty general base routine that I could send to a lot of people as yeah. long as you don't have any outstanding injuries. Yeah, and it's just getting people in the flow, lightweight, twelve reps, mm -hmm. um, what I call the maintenance round. Yeah, and it's getting you used to the movements. It's a lot of oh. Today is your entire upper body, and tomorrow's yeah. all lower body. So you start to spread out the weight. Mm -hmm. um, but if people want sports performance, they're gonna do what I do. They're gonna do circuits. They're gonna do balance activities. Yeah. Um, and then I have I have, I have uh, a few clients that are like sixty years old. Yeah. And they need more corrective exercises mm -hmm. because oh I have back pain because I'm old. Well no you have back pain because you've been sitting wrong for thirty years. You yeah. know so. It's literally I send out a prelim questionnaire, yeah. and whatever comes back on that questionnaire tells me everything you yeah. know it tells me how well they sleep if they're not eating enough food if they're eating too much food if yeah. they're addicted to coca-cola you know yeah. it tells me everything and yeah. um i just man years later i've gotten really good about assembling things around what people are trying to do mm -hmm. so you so you literally like each client you personally sit down read their questionnaire and then kind of base what you're going to do with them from that point yeah 100 yeah. percent. i the only thing i save i have meal plans that go very specific to what people say they like, don't mm. like, what they need. Yeah. I save the workouts that I write because they do overlap sometimes. Like, yeah. you know, if um, if I'm in a stage where I want to lose a little bit of weight and I want to build my cardio in the off season, yeah. I might do the workout I gave you. Yeah. But for the most part, everything is super, super customized. Yeah. So that's – like I find that I, – I, I like that a lot because – just because like I've done a couple online things like – I've gone down the YouTube route sure. and like uh, bodybuilding.com and all stuff, but that's very, very generic. Like there's a lot of guys in the military that I know they're like, Oh, I'm doing this. Uh, I'm trying to think of like, Oh, the Arnold workout. Yeah. And it's just like, Oh, 15, uh, 15 shoulder press and everyone's doing the same movement, but like different guys are getting different results. Mm -hmm. Like one guy that his chest is huge, but has no arms. <laughs> and it's, just, it's, it's weird because like they're like certain workouts work out work better for certain people. And I, when it comes to online stuff, that's what a lot of people think. I don't actually, to be honest with you, I thought you were sending me like generic type stuff. Oh, really? When I, when I first joined. Oh, okay. But I was like, you know, he's my friend. I got to support a business. And it actually went out. <laughs> <laughs> but but when I, I was going through it, I was like, oh, I'm actually feeling like, I've, I've felt great for the past two years. Yeah. Yeah, because it's just like, like you said, it's like once you get into fitness and I started realizing what you're, uh, when, you start, when you start explaining to me like how everything's working out. And man, I've started doing some more research, you know, next thing you know, like, my wife calls me a gym rat, because I'm in the gym four to five times, four to five times a week. Nice. He's like, oh, you're, you're a gym rat. I was like, no, 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 my, Greg's a gym rat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, He's literally yeah. in the gym all the time. <laughs> me, I just go to work out in the morning, so yeah. I can stay healthy, and not, like, have body pain. Yeah. But, Dude, you know what this is, and I'll never say someone's name that I don't agree with their programs on mm -hmm. here. Like, I've never put somebody on blast, mm -hmm. but a lot of trainers say, uh, do what I do. It worked for me. You do what I do. But I, there's no way I'm going to give you my diet. Like, it's not going to work for you. It's not going to work for your work schedule, yeah. any of that. So, I don't know. I, I'm passionate about what I do, and mm -hmm. I want people to see that. Yeah. Like, I, 
I'll charge less if it makes people <laughs> yeah. see that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't know. I like what I do. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's actually, it's great. It's like, uh, when somebody enjoys, like, thoroughly enjoys what they do, it's, like, always a better product. Yeah. It's like, like the beer we're drinking. The guy who owns this place is a beer nerd. Good for him. I, I just joined, I just got a membership there because he does, like, not just uh, stouts and IPAs like most breweries do because those are very popular styles. He does yeah. what he likes. Like, he does, like, Czech lagers. He has a bunch of Saisons on tap nice. right now. He has uh, a, was it a, a, a Brut lager, which huh. you don't get outside of Germany. Like, this guy is yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like, he's like, oh, no, I'm brewing what I like. I don't really care what you, if you buy it, cool. If not, oh, well. Like, I enjoy what I make. Dude, that is smart business. Yeah. You're not for everyone. Yeah. Just how it is. Yeah, and then he, it's also a barbecue restaurant, and it's a really good barbecue. <laughs> and I'm from Georgia. And, like, I've had some, like, legit barbecue. Down this is barbecue. Some, this is legit barbecue. I thought my dad's barbecue was, this is better than my dad's barbecue. That's so Oh, damn. Barbecue. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry, Dad. Sorry. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. <laughs> like, I had, a, I went there, I had the, the burger. The burger is ground biscuit. What? Uh, brisket. Sorry. I was like, damn, okay. No, ground brisket. <laughs> which, most, like, mo- most of the time, it's going to be, like, I don't even know what regular ground beef is made out of. 85% beef? Yes. Fat? Yeah. And so this one, he's literally taking his brisket, grinding it up, making it into patties, and that's his burger. Damn. And it's so good. Yeah. And then, like, my wife got the brisket tacos, and she's like, and she tried a burger, she's like, I fucked up. I should have yeah. the burger. <laughs> See, I appreciate that stuff, though. I hate, I don't even care what it is. Like, we just, we went to Whole Foods to pick up dinner food. Mm-hmm. And the people there were clearly happy doing what they were doing. Like, I was on the phone, and yeah. they were like, no worries. And they are like, giving me hand signals so yeah. I could keep talking while I was checking out. Mm-hmm. They were super cool. But then you run into some generic store. Yeah. Like, I think Walmart's a great example. Yes. Pretty much everyone working at Walmart hates their job. Yes. And it's like, man, if you hate your job, do something else. Yes. Like, I, it is that easy. As yes. much as people don't like to think it is, it is literally that easy. Yeah, my, you know, it's funny because my wife uh, talks about this all the time. You mean, I think there's more in here. Yeah, you can talk about mm-hmm. it everyone. And we're back. All right. So I can sink it. All right. Where were we? <laughs> um, people hating their jobs yes. your wife said something yes my wife uh, we were talking about um, so my wife was a nanny for 15 years oh wow yeah and uh, she loves kids hates privileged people fair enough so the people who hire nannies yeah so she hates working she hates <laughs> working for people mm-hmm. especially when she has to deal with like other uh, she's like yeah, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's like, I, I, she didn't. She's like, I, I don't have the patience to deal with other people's like uh, brat problem. kids. Well, brat kids and their 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 problems, yeah. right? Because like when you when you're in somebody's house, you deal with like all their stuff. Sure. And she hated it. And I was like, well, we're married now, so I have a pretty good job, so you can go back to school and finish your degree, and then go do whatever you want to do. Yeah. And she's like. Are you sure? I was like, yes, because I'm tired of hearing you complain. Yeah. It's really annoying. Dude. Not like, not saying that no one's annoying or anything, but it's No, just like, but there's that moment of you keep complaining about the same thing every day. Yeah. Change it. Yes. And so she's like, okay. And so she quit her job. She's still part-time Danny just because like she does need extra money for like random things. Sure. Yeah, why not? But like it's part-time shit. She's there maybe twice a week. The people are really nice. And she's and, probably way happier. Yeah, she's way happier because she gets to, she, granted, she does hate school, but... Don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> but she's like, it's more time just to concentrate on like what she wants to do. Like she did like, she had like her own little art business for a little bit to see if that would work out. Yeah. Come to find out working, uh, doing art on social media sucked away all of her creativity because right. she's trying to constantly post. And now we're trying to figure out um, when we have kids, how she can work from home because she wants to be a stay at home mom. Right. And all this stuff. And I was like, well, you're going to school for business and project management. You can kind of manage a project from home. Absolutely. From Absolutely. So, so we're just like figuring this stuff out and then I'm starting to do this. And I'm in school, and I just I switched up. I'm switching over from business to nursing mm. for 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 an opportunity in the, the military. But like, it's just like we we are doing stuff that makes us happy. That's awesome. Yeah, and that's what that's the whole thing. And like my it's one thing my mom told. It's not my mom told me not to do it. It was like yeah. my mom was like safe route, safe route. Oh safe yeah, route. yeah. And I was like, okay, all right, fine. Because like perfect example is um, my turning point in my paintball career. Is when I lived in Florida. I was playing on. I don't know if you heard of a team called Total, uh, Total Carnage. Yeah. Of okay. Course. Yeah. So I played on. on it was uh, TK at the time. I played on TK, and on my D two roster was, was me, Jacob Edwards, Keith Brown, um, and a bunch of other guys that ended up playing for Damage. Yeah. 
And so uh, what ended up happening was um, some stuff happened with my roommate. Uh, we got kicked out of our apartment, and I was technically homeless. Oh, and so she, uh, I was like, oh, I, 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 can, I can sleep on a couch somewhere. I'll be all right. Yeah. And my mom found out. And she's like, no, yeah. you're not sitting on a couch. I'm coming to get you right now. I was like, yeah. but I don't want to move back to Georgia. I want to stay in Florida so I can play paintball. I'm trying to go pro. And she's like, no, you're not. Yeah. No, you're not. It's so like, came home, uh, ended up joining the military like a year, like a year and a half later. And now I'm out here. So, dude, uh, preaching in the choir. Yeah. I mean, I get it. And I mean, I guess this is paintball talk, but it's not. It's about doing what you want to do. You yeah. know what I mean? So, there were so many opportunities that I had coming out of high school mm -hmm. that I could have gone for. Mainly, I could have gone to college for free because of my SAT scores. I could yeah. have gone to college in Massachusetts, any state school for free. Mm -hmm. uh, but instead, I spent every weekend of my senior year, I got dismissed from school on Friday afternoon. Yeah. I flew to Sacramento. I practiced with Excessive, my first uh, full year pro team. And then on Sunday night, I took the red-eye flight home. Nice. Same thing, every night. I'd go to Long Beach, I'd go straight home, mm -hmm. I'd land in the airport in Boston around 5.30 a.m., yeah. and I'd go straight from the airport to school every weekend for a year. Wow. And then at the end of that year, Excessive came through and said, hey, um, if you move out here, you can go to school, you can do all these things, um, we'll keep you on the team, and you can, you can start your pro career. Mm -hmm. I did it in a week. I applied to like 15 schools in yeah. a week, wrote all the essays, did all the things, yeah. paid all the money. Uh, I got in, wow. and uh, my parents... My dad was like, if this is what you want to do, go for it. My mom's having a, an aneurysm yeah. as to how this is going down. But I did it. At 16 years old, I moved 3,000 miles away from home so I could play paintball. You know, like, it were, was crazy. You, were you, so, I can't remember, because you, so it was 2006, right? Uh, so that was two, the beginning of 2007. 2006, I got on NYX. Okay. But NYX was basically getting dismantled. Yeah. Um, and I, I needed to find a team if I wanted to do it. Okay. So this is... Sorry for more paintball talk, guys. Mm. But, like, it's what I did for so long. But um, this was the year after Excessive 100 and Beach, right? They got they got dismantled. And after they were that. bringing in a bunch of kids to try to rebuild the team. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I remember this because my favorite DVD growing up was the Excessive Story. Of course. Yeah, because it was just... It was just... It was really cool. It was, it was epic. Yeah, it was, it was, like... My mom watches, like... You like she saw what all they went through. She's like, you really want to do? That's what you want to do? It's like, yes. Do you yeah. realize how much fun they're having? Like, besides the whole like, Nicky Vegas didn't have money for rent and all this stuff. Like, don't pay attention to that. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah you you pay attention part. to the paintball part. Yeah. And everyone was like, no. I mean, we we all went through it. You know, even even when I came out here, my mom hated paintball for a bit. Yeah. Because I'd miss school for it, but I always got good grades. You know, mm -hmm. I had, we had a rule in my house, and you had to get on a roll, or I couldn't play. Yeah. So I, I did well. But it was when I was missing classes, but my mom truly bought in when I brought home a magazine. I had a full page spread of me <laughs> in the magazine. You could go buy this magazine in Barnes & Noble. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Like when they had magazines. Yeah, back when uh, I was a thing, yeah. But that was when my mom was like, wow, you know, this this could be something, you yeah. know? And then it evolved from there. Now she knows about what happens on PB Nation before I know what happens about PB Nation. And she has been my number <coughs> one fan the whole time, you know, yeah, ever since. You know, it's my, my parents never bought into it. Um, it was just like, my parents tried to support it for a little bit when I was in college yeah. in Florida, and they, she, they were like, no, like, you're going it's to It's hard to understand. Yeah, it was like, we just don't get it. Like, my yeah. mom's always played the safe route. Mm -hmm. And then my dad, it was just like, you gotta you gotta make sure you're, uh, you, gotta, you have to make money. Yeah. And he's like, how are you gonna make money at paintball? I was like, I don't know yet. Yeah. But I know I can do it. Yeah. And, and, and uh, well, things went the way they did, and now I'm like, now I'm doing podcasts now, so it's yeah, fine. Yeah, 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 dude. Doing that's podcasts like, and drinking beer, so I'm, that's all that's all, it's, uh, all that matters now. So Yeah, 100%. I mean, bring it full circle. It's about it's about doing what you want to do. Yeah. You know? Well, the one thing I did like about moving out to California, um, because I, when I, the school I went to was Universal Technical Institute, which is one in Sacramento, and I tried to go to the one in Sacramento because I went to, because in Georgia... It's like, well, you got to get to California, Florida, or Texas for paintball. 100%. To go pro. And I was like, okay. And I was like, I want to go to California because I really liked it in California because I lived here when I was, like, real young. Uh, and I was like, you're not moving to Sacramento to go to UTI, which I already know you're going out there just to play paintball. And you're going <laughs> to miss class. It's like, yeah. all right, fine, you caught me. I'll go to the one four hours away. But, like, when I moved out to California, um, I actually met a lot of pro paintball players yeah oddly enough like oh, granted I knew some of the guys in Florida but then like I met you I met Dave I met all the guys in DMG now are all pro and then like all the just random pro guys who came up to the field yeah and all my friends back in Georgia is like 
you go to Dave Baines Field every weekend. I'm like, yeah. 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 I was like, I was that guy for a little <laughs> bit, but it was just still, it was, it was still really cool. But it's also a really cool culture because, like, off of PayPal, like a lot of guys like yourself are starting to start these. They're starting all these businesses. Like, mm. you have uh, Map. Um, another one that I'm keep tr- uh, keeping uh, eyes on is uh, Damien Ryan has Plum Life, mm-hmm. which is it's a weed company, but. Yeah, and then uh, who else is doing? Uh, Tyler Harmon's taking over his family business as the the Harmon Pest Control. Yeah, and it's just like it's like there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, success stories built from the drive you learn from paintball. Yeah, and it's just like all these different things are popping up. And these, these are the people I support. Right. Oddly enough, so it's just I, I find it. I think it's pretty cool. Like Dude. it's pretty cool to see it go, go full circle. Like I don't know who half the pro baseball players are anymore because like all these new guys coming up yeah. and stuff. So all the guys I idolized growing up are starting to retire and stuff. Because I the my favorite pro baseball team of all time is the 2007 lineup for the Ironman. Because uh, okay. my favorite player was I was a Sean McDonald fan back then. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He was crunchy. Yeah. yeah. Was and. It literally was only because he was like one of two black guys. Yeah, yeah, was, hey, that's fair. Yeah, hey, call it like you see it, man. Yeah, I was like, hey, <laughs> guy, can I get a Greg, he was like short. He played the snake. I yeah. played the I played the the back. Way bigger, I was way bigger. Um, and then like there was like Ollie, uh, Nikki Cuba was on that squad. Um, Scott Kemp, mm-hmm. Brandon Short, Brandon Short, Mike Paxson. Yeah, Mike Paxson. Come on, quiz me. Who else? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's really funny is like a lot of guys like pro paintball players like. Actually, um, I was watching uh, the Dizon Docs a couple weeks ago. No, it wasn't the Dizon Docs. Yeah, it was Dizon Docs. And Chad Boucher uh, was like, all right, who won Cup in 2009? He just named the team. And I was like, damn. Yeah. And I was like, oh, guys, like, guys who just nerd the sport like that. Just, yeah, but 2009 was the Ironman, wasn't it? 2009 was the Philly All-Americans. Oh, because oh seven oh eight was the back-to-back for the yeah. Ironman. Yeah, oh seven oh eight, and then all oh, nine, All-Americans, really. and then they dismantled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was just like, yeah, it, it was just really funny because like, is when you see someone else who nerds the same thing as you, that's like such a niche thing, yeah. and you're like, oh, it's so yeah, I get it, so, I get it, <laughs> I understand where you're coming from. I buy in. Yeah, it's it's really funny. Yeah, um, what would be like, um, what is your top three paintball moments? Top three paintball moments. Wow. I know it's uh, a lot, so. No, it's... Uh, I get it, I get it. So, top three paintball moments. Just generally, not like most exciting, just generally t- so like, my the, favorites. The, your, your favorite, your personal favorites for okay. whatever reason. So, one of them... I'll throw this in. So, one of them, I guess, is now my favorite paintball moment, mm-hmm. but it's still my worst paintball moment. Okay. In 2008, I was on the Ironman. Yeah. We won World Cup. Mm-hmm. I got sat the entire event. Yeah. Given I was like maybe seventeen. Yeah. And uh, you know I, it, it went down the way it went down. We won. You can't argue with that. But I got sat the whole event. We won World Cup. Yeah. So now everyone still tells me that I won World Cup, and I'm like, kind of hate you for saying it. Yeah. But at the end of that event, my whole family was there. Some of them had never seen me play paintball like that, yeah. and uh, I was in tears, man. I just promised myself that was never going to happen again. Yeah. And now here I am. You know? <laughs> You're the starter for any squad. So it's, yeah. That's how I feel, you know? Yeah. And at one point, I was the highest paid player in the league. Yeah. And, you know, it, um, I walked away from that position. Yeah. And it's been awesome, but I think that that motivated me beyond anything. Yeah. Right? Um, another favorite paintball moment, um, probably the first time I went to Europe. So nice. the first time I got invited to go to Europe, it was actually Oliver Lang walked into the room, right? And he's mm-hmm. on the phone, and he goes... Hey, uh, and looked around, dude, luck of the draw. He's like, Greg, you want to play Europe? I'm like, yes, I want to play Europe. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, yeah, I got a guy. That was it. I started going to Europe. Yeah. So I was on a flight to Barcelona and at the time Europe was a little behind USA. There was no Wi-Fi. A little bit. There was no <laughs> cell phone service. Yeah. There was no nothing. Right. Yeah. And it's my first time going over there. So I get there and I'm like, now what do I do? I hadn't talked to anyone I was supposed to be with. I, ha- I have no idea what they look like. I barely know the team name. I have yeah. no idea where we're going. Uh, I have no way of contacting them. Yeah. And I'm like, huh, what do I do? So I'm literally in the corner at the airport plugging my computer and trying to figure out how to log onto the internet that I can't read. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Oliver walks by in the airport. I'm like, Oliver, like, who am I supposed to meet? And he's like, oh, uh, it's Sven and Kiki, the Germans, 
they're right over there. I'm like, yes. <laughs> so that was my first experience going to Europe. And I ended up playing with Sven and Kiki and their team mm -hmm. for for like a decade. I spent a ton of time in Germany with them yeah. and learned so much and it was so much fun. But yeah. they're some of my best friends from over there. Yeah. And uh, it all started because I was in the corner trying to figure out who they were, you yeah. know? Um, <coughs> third, man. Maybe the first time I played for Team USA. So, 2013. 2013 was the first, like, official Team USA. I think you're right. Yeah. I think it was 2013. Yeah. Um, it's just an honor. It's, yeah. Dude, it's so exciting to yeah. walk out there with the USA stuff on your chest yeah. and, and, and be, like, representing the country. And they play the anthem. And yeah. it just... It was awesome, and we curb stomped people. It oh, was I so much fun. I remember because like there was a because this is when I was like hardcore into PB Nation, and it was like uh, they were like I don't think they're gonna invite America back. Cause they didn't. Yeah, they were just like there's no point. I was like eh, yeah, there's at this point in time there Dude. is no point inviting America back because literally all the top players come from the U.S. Yeah, except for like three Russians. That was it. for years. Yeah. They we called it the Olympics because yeah. we'd go curb stomp the pro teams, <laughs> and then they'd be like, you're, "You can't play. You can't play. You can't play." Yeah. Okay, you can play like every four years. So we're like, "It's the Olympics. We gotta get back in." And uh, man, dude, there were times like. 2016 when we did it mm -hmm. we lost two points <laughs> two points so and the two points we lost was against the Russian Legion they were and they still had a good team yeah, yeah. and uh it was because we got penalties that other was... than that we just beat the brakes off teams oh and it's God. so exciting it's so much fun yeah you know it's 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 really funny because like granted I never I never I have never played for paintball like the highest I got to was D2 but like the, the, when you just like curb stop somebody, like, oh, yeah, like it's in any sport when you just like dominate somebody, you just feel so it's like such a great feeling. It's like everything works, yeah, all everything we've been practicing works out, yeah. And it was like the I think the best one we ever did, I was playing it was a WCPPL in Vegas, and it was, we had Tyler Smith and uh Josh Halberg on our team, yeah, because they were just guessing because they could get onto a D3 squad because. To, they were technically D2, but they were playing on the semi-pro squad or whatever. And we just <laughs> curb stuff everybody. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is great. Even if I'm on the field, I was like, I don't have to do anything. Just, <laughs> just shoot my guys have to hold a lane and let Tyler and Josh go to work. Yeah. And then like, oh, hey, go go get the last guy. Like, okay. And it, yeah. it's, it was, it was, it, it, it is a lot of fun to curb stuff. But on that level, I can't even imagine. Oh, yeah. On that level, like, you're just, cur you're literally just destroying countries at that point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, just destroying them. Then they're asking for selfies when we're done, you know? Like, yeah. you feel like a rock star, and yeah. it's cool. When, they, when you go to Europe, a lot of people say it's more like a paintball festival than a paintball tournament. So, back in the day, it was. Yeah. Now, it's become a lot more professional because yeah. people want to compete more like yeah, yeah. They, they still have more fun than people do in the US like they go have beers at the tournament yeah. they, they do all that stuff but the place that's still like that is Asia mm. as an American when you go over to the Asian events it's it's like being a rock star you yeah. know like you roll in everyone's stoked and everyone's taking yeah. photos and they're they're like giving you drinks and they're hanging out and everybody just wants to be friends and yeah. it's fun oh man that's because I, I remember my first pro event I went to was in 2007 I went to MAO yeah, MAO and at uh, Paintball Central. Rob Stoudinger's Park. Yeah. Yeah. Back when, uh, well, this is way after Trauma was not a thing anymore. But it was still like, it's where Trauma came from. Yeah. And like, I was it was I was starstruck because it's like, oh my God, Ollie Lane. Oh my God. Was, I met Dave for the first time there. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't remember at all. But <laughs> and I met Glenn Takamoto. Um, I met Crunchy. Uh, J-Rab. Uh, my buddy was a huge Billy Bernaccia fan. And he was just walking around. He's like, oh my God. Yeah. And, I lose. I had all the pictures on like all my hard drive still, and it's still is like it's a slideshow that goes through. And it's, it's I, well, how old was I? I was 18, 17, 18 years old. I mean, yeah. all these pro players. I'm so happy. I think the best one was I met Chris Asoya, and then like I had just saw the video of him like point blanking the guy in the back of the head, and uh, I was like, why? Why would you do that? He's like, because I'm a dick. <laughs> so I actually made the joke that I got Chris Lasoya today when I went to practice. So I shot a guy in his arm. Yeah. He kept playing, right? He cheated me. Yeah. He, he fills out. He does the thing. Yeah. And I was like, man, you cheated me. I shot you in your elbow. And he goes, yeah, okay. And I was like, shit, I can't really argue with you. You know, you, you just agreed that you cheated me. Yeah. And now I'm angry, but I can't say anything. Yeah. It's... That was Chris Lasoya. Yeah. I would be like, you cheated the shit out of me. He's like, yeah, I did. Yeah. Damn it. 
<laughs> and the one, the, this is actually when it came full circle. So I, the one time I got on the webcast uh, in finals, Crystal Slade was calling my game. Ah, uh, nice. <laughs> just, yeah. He did, he did not pronounce my name correctly at all, which yeah. it's pretty simple. It's just Bennett. But yeah. It's like, was it, is it Bennett? I was like, no, it's not. It's it's Bennett. Yeah. Come like, on, dog. Like Nick, Slo- like Nick Slovak, you know me. Yeah. I've, I've given you beer. Yeah. Like, you know me correct at me. You just wouldn't because... <laughs> La- Lasoya and I have been friends for over a decade. Yeah. And it's because we fought each other. <laughs> Lasoya is one of those dudes where he's so aggressive. If you let him be aggressive, he'll walk all over you. But yeah. if you decide you're going to stand your ground and yeah, you're yeah. going to go toe-to-toe with him, yeah. uh, he's your best friend. And he's a good friend to have. He's so cool. <laughs> but... You, you gotta get through that first hump. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, I remember, because, like... So now, now I'm just gonna nerd out here, but, like, when I was... Because, cause like, uh, I came from the era of Dirter DVDs. Like, oh, yeah. We didn't have we didn't have webcasts, we didn't have YouTube. It was, I had to wait for the Dirter DVDs to find out what happened at the event, unless I, like, looked it up on APPA. Um, but, like, I think it was um, Natural Selection. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it was Natural Selection, and I, that, I think that's the video where you see the point blank. I think. It might be. Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, this dude's dirty." Oh, yeah. And so when I when I go up there, I meet. I was like, "Bro, you're, it's, it's fucked up." Yeah. And he's like, eh. "Yeah, <laughs> what, are you, what, what are you? What are they gonna do? What are they gonna do? Fire yeah. me?" And I was like, "Not really," because at the time it was like, "It's not really like like we're a league, but like yeah. what they, they can't ban you. I mean, they could ban you from something. Yeah. But like you're gonna be banned for like what two events and then come right back. So because I remember uh, Josh Nevius got banned for life for. That spiking his gun. For spiking his gun. He got banned for life. Well, he, after he spiked his gun, he also threatened him. He threatened the ref to <laughs> by actually kill him. But he got banned for life, and now he, he plays for Meet Me. Yeah. yeah Dude, cause... well, it's... Paintball used to be gangster. Oh, like, some of the older dudes used to be hardcore. And yeah. now those are the dudes that run the league. But the league's getting soft because, let's be real, the generations behind us yeah. are getting soft. Yeah, like, and, oh. there's a meme floating around on the... On the on, uh, Facebook, it's like, uh, it's like you never play payball when it's 15 balls a second, and it really shows. Yeah. <laughs> dude, it's so true. Yeah. People get three payballs, and they're like, oh, and I'm like, dude, I would have stapled you to the ground. Like, I would have made sure you didn't get up 10 years ago. Because, like, the guys I played with back in Georgia, they still play that way. Yeah. Because in Georgia, like, oh, oh we're friends, I'm going to fuck you up. And yeah. It's like, and I was like, oh, and like, I remember because Jacob Edwards came and taught a clinic in Atlanta, and my buddy was there, and like, they, they just mess around all the time. Yeah. And so, like, when you're standing there, you ever play the barrel game? You have to start getting, you shoot them in the barrel. Oh. And then it turns to shoot each other in the foot. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, and Jacob's watching him do this, and one guy ends up just, like, doming a dude. And he's like, you guys are so mean. Yeah. He's like, yeah, with my and buddy. And Jacob's pretty mean in paintball. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> he threatened to tank a guy. Yeah. Like, so, but yeah, he's just like, you guys are so mean. He's just like, yeah, to my friend, it's fine. Yeah. Like, we're going to go get beers after this. Hard enough, dude. Yeah. It's, it, and it's, that's one of the best experiences ever. I think it's, like, at war, in, in the military, like, it's the same type of, like, hazing when you're, like, the newer guy. And I think I was, like, preconditioned for it because I played at a the most redneck field in southeast Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> which, if you go to the southeast anywhere, if you ask for, and you talk about low country paintball, everyone goes, oh, you mean Billy? Oh, I know low country. Yeah. 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 yeah you can see? Yeah. Yeah. The, the guy who owns that is my, my paintball dad. Yeah. That's to this day. Thing. Like, we're in contact to this day. I make the joke that in all the years of paintball, it makes me a nicer person Monday through Friday. You know what I mean? Because it's, sometimes I let a little <coughs> loose on the weekends. Like, yeah. It's like, it's, it's, um, I listen to Joe Rogan all the time and it's sure. just, it's just it's, it's, MMA fighters are some of the nicest people you ever meet yeah. because they get all their aggression out in the gym. Ah, uh, but it's more than that. Yeah. It's more than that. Cause if you're, if you're a paintball player and you want to be aggressive, you can get aggressive yeah. out, right? But Monday through Friday, if someone goes toe to toe with me, I'm still like, Phew. Kind of like stand my ground. Yeah. An MMA fighter could care less because they're like, if this dude hits me, I'm going to beat his ass. Yeah. You know, like, the nicest people yeah. are probably good fighters. Yeah. That's what I've learned. Yeah. <laughs> they're not, one they're of the not standing me and my, uh, One thing me and my wife have agreed when we have kids, my my kids are going to be the nice kids that no one fucks with. Yeah, oh yeah. Because we're putting them in, like, I'm just getting into, uh, so since I don't play paintball as much anymore, to fill my time, I start taking jujitsu. Nice. And uh, jujitsu and yoga, so I can be flexible and I can kick your ass. But, <laughs> uh, but like, let's say we're gonna give it to martial arts because it's just like it's a great way to learn. Uh, di- it's a great way to learn discipline. Yeah. And so, and she completely humility. Agreed, which, yeah, humility. And like my wife, honestly, my wife said, "Yeah, that sounds like a great idea." That. I was like, what? 
Yeah. Because granted, she threatens to kick my ass all the time. <laughs> I don't think she'd actually do it, but she might surprise me. Yeah, yeah. Know. You never know. Yeah, I don't know. She's like, she's 4'11", mm-hmm. so she's like tiny. So I don't Gets know. Gets the arms. Yeah, she's going <laughs> <good. laughs> uh, to get to my legs. She's going to... Dude, I'm, I'm with you. I'm thinking about the same stuff right now because my wife's going to have a baby next month. Oh, yeah. like, congratulations. Yeah, that. thank you. We have a baby boy on the way, and I'm like, I can create a cool human. You yeah, know what I mean? <laughs> I can create that dude who's like, no, we're cool. Wait, what'd you just say? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, yeah, hold up, hold up. Do you really, like, rethink it. Just rethink it. Please, just rethink it. Talk to me in 10. <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, you know, it's this, I don't know, like, like with, paint, with paintball, it's just like, I've met some of the, some of the best friendships I've ever had are from paintball. Sure. Even to this day, like, the guys I hang out with on the weekends, like, I still, I, granted, I live all the way, like, I live, like, 45 minutes from here, and I still drive all the way to Sac to hang out with Brindle, Dave. Yeah. Um, Rex lives um, 10 minutes from me, and those are, like, my, that's my core group of friends. Sure. And, oh, and Harrison. I can't forget Harrison. Yeah. Mine's, mine's the guys that um, I did the traveling with. Like, yeah. I've played with so many guys, and sometimes there's guys on teams that seem like your friends, and then you leave the team, you don't, you're don't, you not helping them anymore, yeah. and it's like you guys never knew each other, and it's super weird. Yeah. But I have a handful of dudes, like, um, for me, if, if anyone knows the names, right, it's Tim Montressor, Chad yeah. George, Sam Monville, yeah. uh, Ryan Moorhead, like, that group of dudes, Yeah. those were my travel buddies, my homies, Ryan Smith, um, we went... All over the world together. Yeah. Like, every time an event ended, it was like, where are we going today, buddies? You know? Yeah. And, we, like, we just went adventuring, and they were the homies, because... Yeah, that was... Yeah, you had to be. Well, you know, it's it, it's funny, because I see that I see that all throughout, like, I just see it in paintball. Like, great, it's like the clicks, but, like, the clicks will be split up on different teams, but it's still, like, they're still, like, the click. Sure. Yeah, because, like, was it Tim plays for, what, Damage now? Yep. Um, Ryan Moore still plays for Heat. Same um, for Sam and Chad? Sam, yeah, Sam and Chad and, uh, and uh, Ryan Smith. And Ryan Smith. Yeah, they all play for Heat. But I still felt like, because I remember watching, um, when you went and played for Heat, I watched that, uh, the, the uh, what was it called, those dirter videos they used to do for like little shorts that did like a little history of like a season. Because it was what, uh, 2014 you went to Heat? 2014 I went yeah. to Heat. Dang, he's good. <laughs> watched way too many paintball videos. Well, yeah. yeah. But like, yeah, 2014, I remember watching that. It's like long, hour long. Um, the uh, hour long special on just heat and it was starting from like when everyone first met each other at the first practice all the way to like I think it was like the third or it was either Chicago or Cup yeah I can't remember but like they were sitting there explaining it was like well Sam because like Ryan Moorhead came from Impact Tim Montrezl came from Impact and I was like well I still live next to all these guys and we're all still friends so it's yeah. just like well we'll just come together as one big family now yeah. we should play paintball together and I was like yeah that's as much as it's like paintball is now turning into like more of like professional sport where like you have teams of mercenaries where like everyone's like paid players on that team. Yeah. Yeah, they're friends, but like they're still like they're paid professional players. Yeah. But then you have like you still have the homie squads like Dynasty is a homie squad. Yeah. Um, Uprising is a homie squad. DMG is pretty much a homie squad. Yeah. And it's still like it still reminds me of those days of like <laughs> MPBL was a homie league. Like that's where you just play with the homies. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and like. That's one thing I really liked about paintball. Like, that's how I made, like... Because I traveled with all these guys and went to all these tournaments and we did all this stuff. And like I said, I'm still friends with all these guys to this day and they're some of my best friends. 100%. Yeah. I, I always make the joke, like, I could literally get dropped anywhere in the world yeah. and find a buddy. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> like, it's not even a joke. It's so funny. I, we yeah. always talk about what, what's the TV show where they drop you around the world and they give you, like, a budget. Uh, Race Around America or something? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah uh, no, um... The Greatest Race? The Greatest Race, there it is. Okay, yeah, so yeah. The Greatest Race, I would love it, because they'd be like, we're going to drop you on this random island off the coast of Asia, and I'd be like, oh shit, I know a guy. You know, like, hang on, let me let me scroll through my phone. We'll get a free ride in 10 minutes and a beer. Like, yeah. <laughs> dude, it's, it, that, is, that is definitely the coolest part about PayPal. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's one thing I kind of wish I could have gone on to, like, the internet, like, play international tournaments and stuff like that. I wish I could have gone on there, but it, it's okay. It's all right. Yeah, I still we, get it. I'm still getting it. Like we're going to, um, I'm going to Italy in April. Sweet for our honeymoon two years later. But, yeah, <laughs> but, and then like, uh, and you know, it's actually funny. Uh, until you mentioned it, I didn't know Baby Moon was a thing. Yeah, and so I've always wanted to go to Japan, right? And and, li- sweet. and my wife is not really into the whole Japan. Thing. Like I'm just a huge nerd. I watch anime and all this stuff. Oh, you're a dork. Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge <laughs> nerd. 
Like, actually, the, the reason I couldn't do this yesterday is because I was at an anime convention with my little sisters. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, I've always wanted to go to Japan, and Lila is not into it. And she's like, I don't know if I'm going to be a fan of the culture. I was like, well, it's a beautiful place. It's Japan. Japan's awesome. Yeah. And so she's like, all right, we'll go there for the baby room. And I was like, but we're not having, we're adopting. She's like, yeah, when the paperwork goes through, we're going to fly to Japan and celebrate. And I was like, yeah. oh, okay. That no, works. that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what's funny is every guy I've talked to doesn't know what the baby moon is, and my wife gave me the, the hard time, like, you don't know a baby moon? I'm like, i got to ask questions here. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> what's a baby moon? Like, yeah, but we're in the same boat. We haven't done the honeymoon. Really? We got married back in July. Yeah. Oh, because... We well, yeah, got the baby coming and everything yeah. else, so we're thinking, like, maybe a couple months after the baby, when everyone's settled and yeah. cool, maybe we can go do something. So. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, we're, we're really excited. We're doing, uh, we're taking a cooking class in Italy. Nice. Uh, that's the only thing we've planned so far. Yeah. Uh, we're that's doing, a good way to do it. Yeah, we're doing hostels, I think, the whole time we're there. Oh, wow. And, like, I'm a huge, I love pizza. But, granted, I know, like, pizza's more of, like, Sicilian American thing. Yeah. But there are little bakeries everywhere that do, like, some version of, like, a variation of what they call not it's not a pizza it's just like oh this is this random pastry with cheese and sauce on it nice so I'm really excited and I love pasta and yeah pasta. how long are you there? 12 days so I met I met a flight attendant like 10 years ago <laughs> that told me about these three cities in northern Italy that you hike on, between on the coast? Uh, I don't know okay it was like in a mountain range, and basically okay. each each city is only like two kilometers apart. So you, basically, you're supposed to like party in a city. Yeah. You you hike the next day, and then you party in the city, and you hike the next day, and you end up seeing a lot of the same people because yeah. everyone does it. Yeah. But uh, I've always wanted to do it, so you should check that out because it's okay. supposed to be awesome. Yeah, I'm doing I'm doing a uh, I'm doing a travel vlog on it because. Yeah, nice. Um, well, this whole this whole YouTube channel is like pretty much it's like there's the. There's the official beer reviews. Mm -hmm. There's going to be like homebrew vlogs. This one gets a high review, by the way. <laughs> well, I mean, if they're in, uh, they're on B Street. They're in Midtown, so nice. Yeah, and all their beers are on point. And I'm also going to leave you some box of beer too. So yeah, you can go and kill that if you want yeah. to. Uh, well, there just wasn't much left in there. No, that's okay. But uh, yeah, so like, pretty much this is just like anything, any beer or alcohol related adventures are going to go up on this channel. Nice. So. And then I just learn. I'm like learning how to edit right now. Like I cool. just, I said, I've been I've been up since two o'clock this morning because we went to bed at like seven because that festival I went to yesterday yeah. wore me out. I just went to bed so I got home. <laughs> so I woke up at two in the morning, wide awake, and I was like, all right, well, I might as well start watching my editing videos. And now I'm learning how to edit on iMovie. Dude, it's super easy. It yeah, super easy. Yeah, like yeah. I'm on. I'm using Audacity for this. Okay, and it's audio editing super easy like I made my intro music already for, yeah. for the podcast and for all this stuff and it's it's a lot easier than I thought it was like yeah. wow this takes all of an hour Dude. granted I know I'm not making a movie here or anything like that yeah. so it's just like super simple but like not that hard it's just about getting the flow I, I have a little bit of iMovie and I've gotten decent at Photoshop yeah and it's huge. It makes such a big difference to be able to like, oh, I'm going to take Lorenzo and I'm going to drop him in this scene. Yeah. You know, like to yeah, be able to do that is sweet. Yeah, and like, and what was funny because like, like all these technical difficulties we've been having so far, like I kind of figured out how to fix them. Like with Joe Barrett, uh, I was at the field, so there was a birthday party happening behind us. Oh wow! So I hear kids screaming in the background. I was like, oh, I can kind of like, you can still hear them, but I'm like finessing them out a little bit. Yeah. And then Ben Challenger, I had him on here, and I was at the DMG house. That okay. The fact you have lights on is amazing. Okay, because... Because I'm an adult? Yeah, yeah. Can we <laughs> <you're an adult. laughs> So, like, you see that dark corner over there? Yeah. That's what I was recording in. Nice. Yeah, that's... And, it's, and like, I was like, can we turn the lights on? And like, oh, the lights are on. I'm like, what? So, you had Ben, you had Joe. Yeah. Who else? Um, my brother, my brother-in-law, Theo, who's a DJ in Chico. Cool. Um, my other brother-in-law, who just came back from... Living in uh, traveling South America for six months. Sweet. It's gonna be on, and then a buddy of mine that just opened up a brewery in Lincoln. Okay. Is gonna be on. So, so the other two people that you had for paintball were Ben Challenger and Joe Barrett. Yes. We have lived very different paintball lives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's you know, it's funny because like Joe Barrett did like he just went on this two, went on this two month sabbatical and like he did all over. <laughs> Yeah, sabbatical. It was there a paintball sabbatical. Yeah. But, like, he was, like, traveling around. He went to, I think he went, he did mostly, he did Mexico and Asia. Ben did Australia, Asia, and one event in Europe. And then uh, my buddy, uh, my, my brother-in-law, Theo, um, just, uh, I we did the podcast the three hours before his biggest event he's ever DJed before, which is New Year's Eve at the biggest club in Chico. Um, and then 
my brother-in-law Chaz like was living in South America. Like he lived in Colombia for like a month. And it was in Ecuador during the Civil War that just happened down there. Like last year, he was there. He's like he had to hide up in the mountains till it was good to come out of the mountains so he can catch a bus out of the country. Oh man, yeah. And so this, and then my buddy, yeah. And so this, and then my buddy Zach. Well, that was full. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, this is gonna be audio from the next nine minutes. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, my buddy Zach is opening a brewery in Lincoln called Slice, and I've been trying to get him on the podcast for like. So I've been doing this off and on for like three years yeah and i couldn't tell you where any of the, uh, the previous episodes i have four previous episodes yeah and the other ones are lost to soundcloud somewhere oh wow yeah so but yeah he i've been trying to get him on since forever he says when you ever when you become like official and you have like a legit schedule i'll be on there and i was like okay take over cool school yeah and I, well he's like because he's like he wanted to be on there to promote a business just sure. like you and so he's like i want you to be like legit yeah i was like all right that's fair enough so yeah. Yeah. well shoot i'll post this i got a couple thousand followers we're all right yeah yeah help me get from nine to i'm trying to at least get to 100 that'd be nice uh, i could get you a, a quarter of the way there you know <laughs> i got a uh, i think on the instagram page i have 163 followers right now nice and that's just like the respect your beer page so dude getting into to between fitness and athleticism and like um you know i have, I have a nike sponsor and like stuff like that yeah social media dude it just takes over yeah but it, it, I've really focused on trying to grow it legitimately, not like, hey, paid shout out, bro, yeah. or anything like that. So I'm sitting at like 13.9 thousand on Instagram. Yeah. And like 7 thousand on my athlete page. Wow. It's that's not, not bad. That's not bad. Yeah. That's Facebook's bad. a wash. Everyone's got five. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no one cares about Facebook. Accept people. No one yeah. cares about Facebook anymore. Uh, so we do, I have uh, Instagram and a Twitter. Um, and then. I have a personal Facebook and then I have the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel has one video on it right now because it's just one beer review. Yeah. All the other beer reviews are sitting on the SD card that is currently sitting full. Uh, <laughs> so I need to offload those, but I need to do the, those are twice a week and then this is coming out every other week. Nice. Yeah. So I can kind of like take these few episodes and like backlog yeah. for a little bit so I can try to find like, um, like one thing I'm trying to do is like find like a consistent co-host because like everyone's like has their own thing going on and stuff sure. because like trying to get guests when you're not like a well-known name is kind of difficult like <laughs> my you ever heard of uh burt kreischer mm -mm. so he's a he's a comedian he's my favorite comedian and i shot him an email because he's gonna be in sacramento in february i was like hey man uh i just started my own podcast i know you're a busy comedian and all this stuff but uh this comes to you you don't even yeah. have to leave your tour bus yeah like i was like i'll come just sit down for 30 minutes yeah if you can sit down with me for 30 minutes have a beer because i always want to have a beer with him anyway and talk to me. He's like, oh, well, I don't know. Because I have like four dates in Sacramento. And it's like back to back to back to back. And yeah. Just, and then he's like, then we get on the bus and keep going. I was like, I mean, if you want to drop me off somewhere where I can get like a ride back, then I'll just do it on the bus while it's going. I don't care. Yeah. But he's, uh, he well, oh, he said no because he's like, he has he's his own busy. podcast. He's busy. Yeah. He's, he's actually famous. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then like I tried to, I was talking about getting Dave on here, but Dave is super flaky and uh, yeah. <laughs> no comment. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah, dude, I, I don't know. With with paintball guys, it's easier, right? Because I always joke that we're only famous on the weekends. Yeah. Monday through Friday, we are normal ass people. Yeah. But, um, and I know a lot of them, so. Right? That's why so, I'm pretty sure people are going to think this is a paintball podcast at first. So. Yeah. I get that. I mean, the, the clothing company that I work with and the gym company, like, they have insane followings and they make a lot more money than you or I. And, yeah. Uh, it's a lot harder to be like, hey, man, I was going to mention this. And like, don't. No. You can't do that. No, no, like, no. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Fine. Fine. <laughs> That's uh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we're getting close to about an hour here, so cool. uh, we can go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, go ahead and promote anything you want on here. So, um, floor is yours. Yeah. Uh, hashtag this. Hashtag that. Yeah. No. Um, this was awesome. I, I will say that this is definitely one of the most entertaining podcasts that I've been a part of. Oh, okay. And I've been on a bunch of them yeah. and done thousands of interviews. So this was pretty cool to bounce back and forth. I hope yeah. everyone gets a, a feel for the paintball thing. But um, yeah, if anyone's interested in personal training, I guess I'll throw it out there. Yeah, right? go ahead, man. Yeah, uh, it's trainwithmap.com. It's trainwithmap on Instagram. And then my Instagram is Greg Sewers 14 No mm -hmm. one can spell that last name. But yeah. if you get the Greg S-I-E, I'll probably pop up. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I'm always happy to talk to new people, learn new things, and, and invite anyone to come join me if they're interested in fitness and nutrition or paintball and whatever. All right. Yeah. Perfect. 
All right. Well, that's going to uh, go ahead and uh, that's going to close us out. Uh, be sure to check out our Instagram at respect underscore your underscore beer. Um, respect your beer on YouTube and at respect your beer on Twitter. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe to the page. Uh, this is going to be on, I forget what audio platforms this does. Go on my anchor, anchor.fm, and it's Spotify, iTunes, Google Play. That's what I'm on. So there you go. Yeah. All right, guys. See you next time. Mm-hmm.